Oh, this is the end of the pier. I'm moving a little bit. <laughs> but there's Boston Harbour. Alright, there's Logan Airport. Uh, there's a little control tower for Logan Airport. And right over here. Somewhere, if I can find it. There it is. The old Nantucket lightship. It's now a museum ship. And the rest of Boston. Good old Tobin Bridge. Rose Wharf. Boston Aquarium's over there. Coast Guard Station's over here. And then, you want fresh seafood? Right over here. It's the Boston Fish Pier. Okay, we got a walk-in that's not running. Uh, well, it's running, but it's not down to temp. And uh, this is it. The basic commercial walk-in refrigerator. And uh, we're low on a charge. I already know that just by feeling the lines and going downstairs. And I already fixed the leak, which was on a, uh, a uh, mechanical fitting downstairs. Now, this is a message to Sparkies everywhere. For the love of God, do not mount the disconnect to the panel that I have to remove to get at the unit. That's just stupid. Make yourself a little bracket. All you needed was a little piece of 2x4 to bolt that to, but no, you had to go to the side of the unit and make my life harder than it needs to be. Uh, let me try to wrestle this thing off now. even cuter. That's even cuter. Not only did they mount it there, but they gave me no slack to be able to pull this off. <sighs> For the love of God. Alright, well I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to prop this up somehow here. Give me, give me a minute to jury rig this thing so I can actually work on it. Okay, even though that this is uh, doesn't look that dirty, I know that it's filthy because my head pressure is through the roof even though I have a leak. So we have to ask to clean this. Now this is a very small coil, but the same thing would go for your uh, air conditioning at your house, whether it be a split system or even a window unit. The first thing you need to do is take off any grates or anything that are on it, those hail protectors if you have them. Take those off and brush all the big stuff off. If you have chunks of uh, pollen and dirt, brush that all off. And the cleaner we're going to be using is the New Bright Condenser Cleaner, the blue stuff, not the uh, pink stuff. Uh, you can get this in any refrigeration supply house, and I'm assuming you can get it on the internet or something. One gallon is more than enough. Um, I'm going to be using what's called the coil gun which is this here, it's basically the same idea as, um, you know, your miracle Grow little sprayers. Um, I have a selector switch up here, which will adjust my mix, and it hooks directly to the hose. But what you need to do is just take one of those, uh, like, Windex sprayers, fill it halfway with the, uh, the coil cleaner, and halfway with water, preferably warm water. Be careful with the cleaner, though. If you get it on your hands, it will burn your hands. Chemi it will chemically give you chemical burns, so just be aware of that. Also, even though it's said it's safe to use around plants, try to keep it away from plants as much as possible because I don't trust that. So after you get your mix and everything all started and get your big chunky stuff off, just take a hose and just uh, rinse it. Now, when you spray it, don't spray it straight in like this because you have electrical components and famos and stuff in there. Spray down at a 45 degree angle. That's going to do two things. That's going to make sure that you don't go straight through the coil and hit something electrical. And that also makes sure that you don't push the, any of this stuff further into the coil. You want it to come out. Also make sure that you're at a 90 degree angle to 
the coil. If you cock sideways, the pressure of the hose will actually bend the fins over. So we'll give this guy a rinse here. Okay, uh, let me hook up the coil gun to the hose here. Okay, I got the coil gun here hooked up. Now, if you were using just a spray bottle, you'll be able to see what places you hit and what places you didn't, because it'll actually turn white and foam up. Beware of wind when it blows back in your face. Ugh. Now, you saw that it didn't look that bad, but you see all that brown stuff that's coming off there? That's all what's in between the coil, and that's what you're getting out. What this does is it penetrates in, and you can see it actually bubbling right there. You actually see it foaming out. Now you don't want the, this stuff to dry on the coil. You only want to let it sit for uh, maybe a, a minute or so or even less than that. You can see it all bubbling out. That's reacting with the actual metal and uh, taking off all the oxidization and cleaning off all the grime and gross. So You can see how it's coming out kind of yellowish black now in spots. That's all the pollen that was stuck inside there. Do the same thing when you rinse. What I like to do is just do a mist here, break all that foam off. You can see all the yellow stuff that's off there. And I like to separate the coil into sections. So this I'll do two sections, one here and one here, right down the middle. I'm gonna start at the top and rinse the foam down. You can see all the stuff that's coming out of that coil. feel good about the air you breathe, doesn't it? Now you just want to make sure that you get all of that acid off. Keep rinsing it until the bottom water coming off here is relatively clear. Uh, there's still a little bit of white there. Yeah. And now all that water coming off of there has no white foam in it. Now that coil is completely spotless. 100% airflow in that. Now don't turn the unit on right away, let it drip off for about five minutes or so, get the bulk of water out of it. And I don't know if you can tell here, I'll try to get it. You might be able to see. Might not be showing up on camera, but I can see straight through that coil now. I see the light on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna let this drip dry. and. Well, we're back sweating our ass off on the roof. Now, I was here yesterday and I did the acid clean on these units. Unfortunately, I tried doing it with my iPhone. And this video quality was just crappy, so these coils are clean. Um, but when I was here, this unit runs. I had two condenser fan motors. This one's okay. This one's running backwards. So I don't know if it's the motor itself or just the capacitor. So hopefully I can replace it just the capacitor and get this thing to run right. Um, at least I'm hoping that'll save me a lot of effort. Oh, I'm spinning in that direction. This one spinning in the opposite direction. So let's see if I can replace.
place just at the bass and get that run in the correct direction and energy. But this unit is a uh, 12 and a half ton spout. Probably about uh, you know, three, two and a half, three times the size of a uh, normal split system for your house. It's about, you know, 12 times larger than a regular window air conditioning unit. And uh, one of my pet peeves about units like this is you have a nice door with these knobs. It gives you access to the electrical and compressor section. The only problem is with this door open, I short cycle the airflow through this big gaping space instead of through the coil like I want. So I gotta hook up my gauges to the ports and then you gotta somehow get your gauges outside and wedge this door shut. I don't know why they do that. It's just stupid. Quick word on how these work. You have your compressors here. This happens to have two. It's a dual stage system. Uh, the compressor compresses vapor refrigerant, um, a low pressure, cool vapor refrigerant into a, a high pressure uh, vapor refrigerant, which comes out of this line here. This line gets hot as hell. You touch it, you will burn yourself instantly. This then goes through that giant coil that you see in the back there, and uh, the fans blow across it to cool down the refrigerant. Now, in the process of cooling it down, it turns it into a high pressure liquid, which goes through these two lines here. And through these are what are called filter dryers, which is basically uh, has desiccant inside, a screen, and acts as a filter, and any excess moisture that's in there from um, manufacturing and uh, whatever will be held in that. Um, from there, it goes through the blower section here, which is where your evaporator coil is. Your evaporator coil is the part that gets cold. Now there's two ways it gets cold, <coughs> or I'm sorry, uh, the way it gets cold is it takes that high pressure liquid and forces it through some sort of orifice and which will basically spray the refrigerant like a mist into that coil. Now as it does that, it instantly vaporizes. In the process of vaporizing, it absorbs heat from the air. This blower circulates the air from the building, from that ductwork, through this way, through the coil, and blows it back down. Now, the way this, there's two different ways of accomplishing the uh, state of change of the refrigerant from a liquid to a, a, a vapor. And this unit happens to use the easy kind of tried and proven method, which is right in every one of these lines here. Every one of these lines at the very end here, there's an orifice, there's a little pinhole restriction. As a refrigerant hits that restriction, just like you would a garden hose pinch the end, it just sprays out of the end of that, which will it, into a larger area inside this coil, which will instantly drop. The, uh, the pressure and make it vaporize, which will cool it off. Um, the other way and more efficient method is with what's called an expansion valve, which will um, basically have one take the place of all those little orifices and it'll um, have a temperature sensor that will be strapped to this line here. Now that can adjust the flow of refrigerant based upon the temperature of this line. So when you first start the unit up when it's really warm, um, it'll let more refrigerant into the coil, and as it gets cold, it'll slowly meter it down a little bit. And that's kind of how the refrigeration system works. So hopefully, we try replacing that capacitor. Get that sucker running the right way. All right, here's what the uh, the inside of one of these bad guys look like. Um, pretty, pretty simple. You got your contactors for your compressors, blower, a relay for your condenser fan motors, Capacitors for your condenser fan motors, which is just the one that just replaced. 24 volt transformer, brain, ignition board, big ass transformer. This is a step up transformer for a glow plug, and then your two compressors. And uh, this controls everything. It controls all your uh, your pressure controls and all that stuff to sense when it should do what. These things suck. They go bad all the time. So, um, let me hook in my second compressor. I had to unhook it yesterday just to get the unit running. Um, so let's hook that in and see if this motor runs the right direction. Okay, we got power to the unit. They're on a delay. Now, all of these right here are your thermostat wires, and if you look, they have letters on them. 
and basically they mean different things. R is your power, Y is cooling, W is heat, uh, G is your fan, and common is a 24 volt neutral uh, when you have a thermostat that's powered off the unit itself, not just the, uh, not just batteries. Now all units have, or all newer units have, uh, or newer places have digital thermostats now because apparently mercury is bad and they don't make mercury switch thermostats no more. So, wait for this delay here. I'll be able to see these contact is popping in. trouble for this little bastard. Figured you guys would like this one. That's your regular old up last kitchen exhaust here. Not working. They said it was making a bunch of noise yesterday. And of course called today when it completely died. And uh I don't know. Maybe why. Oh uh, yeah, it's still good. We can fix it. Guess it was making a racket, huh? <laughs> you can see how much... Uh, this has been making noise for way more than a day. Okay, look, <laughs> look how worn down that shaft is. Uh, that's, that's just that's a thing of beauty. You, know, you, can't, you can't make this stuff up sometimes. 